नमस्कार हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर जयप्रकाश शाह एंड प्रैक्टिसिंग फिट एंड मेडिसिन एट रजनी हॉस्पिटल सिटी एम चार रस्ता अहमदाबाद एज वेल एज एट रजनी फिट एंड मेडिसिन सेंटर सेंट जेवियर्स कॉलेज कॉर्नर नवरंगपुरा एलोंग विथ डॉक्टर पाठ शाह इफ यू हैव क्वेरी ऑन एनी ऑफ दिस अल्ट्रासाउंड ऑफ द फिटर्स और गैनिकोलॉजी और इफ यू आर हैविंग एनी इंटरेस्टिंग केसेस एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू शेयर प्लीज शेयर ऑन माई मोबाइल नंबर नाइन फोर टू सिक्स थ्री फाइव सिक्स वन नाइन एट हियर इन दिस टॉक आई विल बी प्रेजेंटिंग ऑन फिटर इको बेसिक एज वेल एज एक्सटेंडेड what do you think is it normal or abnormal the question is tricky the true answer is that if it is a cephalic presentation it is yes normal but when it is a breech presentation it is abnormal why remember the steps the first step was to confirm the side of the fetus which is right side and left side and once you have confirmed the side then confirm that the stomach is lying on the left side and the heart is tilted to the left side now if you say that this is a cephalic presentation the spine the stomach and the portal so when it is in a clockwise rotation then it is said that it is a situs solitus but when it is a bridge presentation the stomach this will be right side of the patient and so when the stomach is on the right the heart is on the right either it is a situs inversus or it can be a dextra the ambiguous situs so that's why remember the step first visceral orientation and um, first the side of the fetus and then the visceral so at abdominal circumference you try to look at spine stomach then portal and when they are in a clockwise direction that means the fetus has to be having a cephalic presentation and in that case the stomach is on left side now with this orientation if the fetus is having a breech presentation then the stomach is situated in right side you also have a look at aorta and in fear pena keva and draw a line from the spine anteriorly note that the aorta is situated just anterior to the spine and it is on left side while in fear vena keva is anterior and to the right side of the spine then you define the structure and define the cavities so which is the right ventricle and which is left ventricle right atrium and left ventrium one has to define the cavity which is situated near the chest wall is the the cavity which is having the moderate turbine the cavity where the atrioventricular wall or towards the apex is the right ventricle the cavity which is near to the spine the cavity where the flap of foramen ovale is opening and the cavity where the pulmonary is are entering in the cavity where the atrioventricular wall is towards the base it is the left atrium so rest of the two cavities are automatically defined so you have defined the cavities after confirming the situs you start the detailed examination of four chamber view in four chamber view identify chambers this one is left ventricle right ventricle left atrium and right ventricle atrium notice that both the ventricles they are almost of equal size they contract and relax simultaneously apex of left ventricle is occupying the apex of the heart while apex of right ventricle is having moderate band 
between the two ventricles is an intact interventricular septum. The right atrium and left atrium both are of almost equal size. They contract and relax simultaneously. In between the two atrium is interatrial septum. You notice septum primum which is more towards base and septum secundum which is more towards the crux. It is also uh, both septum secundum and septum primum. In between the septum secundum and primum you notice foramen oval and the flap of foramen oval is fitting in the left atrium. Now you try to identify the pulmonary veins which are entering in left atrium and always they enter in left atrium. Behind the heart there is aorta which is more little more to the left side and there is small vessel which is a zygous vein which is anterior and little more to the right but posterior to the aorta. Notice the crux. At the crux atrioventricular valves they are connected but here there is little offset. Between the right atrium and right ventricle is a tricuspid valve and it is situated more towards the apex while between left atrium and left ventricle is a mitral valve and it is more towards base and because of this offset there is a atrioventricular septum which you can identify between right atrium and left ventricle. Both the lungs they are situated on both the side of the heart they are homogeneously echogenic and they extend between heart and the chest wall. Ribs are visible at least extending up to two third of the chest wall. From four chamber view as you move up you come to left outflow track. For getting a better left outflow track after sliding up the probe little bit higher up. You rotate the probe to the left shoulder of the fetus and you will be able to identify left outflow track precisely well. What you are seeing here is the anterior wall of the aorta is visible which is in continuation with the interventricular septum while the posterior wall of the aorta is in continuation with the flap of mitral wall. In the aorta you are identifying a dot which is visible when the aortic wall is closed but when the aortic wall is open the dot disappear and when the dot disappear you will be able to see the flow through the aortic wall. Here the aortic wall is open and you don't see the dot but when the aortic wall gets closed you identify the dot and at that time you will not see the flow but when the aortic wall is open you will be able to see the flow through the aorta and so that's the flow through the aorta you are identifying. This is the first vessel to come out of the heart and it do not divide immediately while the second vessel which arises from heart is pulmonary and it divides immediately that we will be seeing next. Now to get right outflow track you have to move little higher sliding from left outflow track and rotate your transducer little bit to the right shoulder of the fetus and here you identify right ventricle, pulmonary valve, main pulmonary artery which divides immediately into right pulmonary which passes between ascending aorta and the trachea to the right lung and left pulmonary which goes straight and it gives rise to left pulmonary and continues straight to the descending aorta as a ductus arteriosus. <coughs> now from right outflow track you move little bit up and uh, you will come to the three 
vessel view from left to right here you are identifying main pulmonary artery then ascending aorta and superior vena cava if you look at the size of all these three vessel they are large, uh, in the descending order largest is pulmonary then aorta and then smallest one is the superior vena cava if you look to the anterior border <coughs> then anterior border of all these three vessel is in the straight line and anterior to the three vessel view you see hypoechoic area and that is nothing but the thymus left pulmonary artery continues as a ductus arteriosus into the descending aorta and the distance between all these three vessel will be almost equal a small vessel you can identify connecting to the superior vena cava and that is azygous and in between you are seeing a small hypoechoic area and that is the trachea when you just move your transducer up from the three vessel view you come to the three vessel trachea view where you are seeing a large v and the large arm of the v is pulmonary and the small arm of the v is aorta and anterior to it uh, to the right side of it you are seeing the superior vena cava the v is on the left side of trachea so both the ductal arch and the aortic arch they are situated thanks friends if you like the video please go to youtube and rajini fetal medicine center channel you like it subscribe it and press the notification bell so that whenever a new video is uploaded you will be given a notification thank you